Today, we'll be looking at this gun, that some sort is semi-automatic pistol. Although, this is not a sponsored gun, I purchased it at Blades and Triggers in the Menden Shopping Centre in Pretoria, where I received excellent service. When the first example I got malfunctioned, I took it in, they exchanged it without any quibbles, and even couriered the, the, the replacement um, pistol back to me. So, the pistol comes in this nice hard case, padded, and you can fit all your um, accessories as well as the pistol inside. So as you can see here, this is quite a big gun, compared here to a full-size model of the Colt 1911 ACP.45, it dwarfs it, so it is really a very large, very heavy pistol. So this is how it looks with the scope that I've installed, but just for your information, I've included these pictures of how the gun looks without the scope being installed. The gun is semi-automatic with a bolt action, a 12-shot magazine in point two to form which slides into a slot. I fitted this compact 4x32 adjustable objective scope, but the gun does come with uh, fiber optic sights which is fitted onto the Picatinny rail and obviously I've removed it in order to fit the sight. The gun is fitted with a shrouded barrel but I don't know whether the shroud really makes that much of a difference in the loudness of this gun, we'll test it later. It has a non-adjustable trigger which is quite stiff as well as a trigger safety on the right hand side above the trigger. The grip is, is comfortable but it, this is purely for right handers. That shelf um, on the gun makes it impossible to, to grip this gun with your with your left hand. Um, it has an onboard pressure gauge which is quite accurate and the gun comes equipped with these accessories. You get in three magazines a uh, detachable butt stock as well as a number of o-rings. Now, as I've already said, it's a large gun, but you don't have to use it as a pistol only. If you attach that buttstock, you can use it as a carbine as well. And obviously, the buttstock is folded, so you can also fold it and still use it as a pistol. Looking at the specifications, the gun um, is supposed to shoot at 700 feet per second with a 16 foot pound muzzle energy. The magazine capacity is 12. The air is was quite small with a 62 cc capacity which falls to 200 bars. The shots per full is claimed to be 36. We'll have a look at that later. It is quite a large gun as I've already mentioned with a total length of 480 millimeter without the stock and with the stock fitted 635 millimeters. It weighs in a 2.16 kilogram which is about twice as heavy as the Colt 1911 ACP which we spoke about earlier. So now we will do some shooting and do a few tests on this gun. We tested the shots per fill by filling the gun to 200 bar and then using these JSB exact jumbo 15.89 grain shot the gun until it wouldn't cycle anymore. This was at about 50 bar. Shot number one chronied at 682 feet per second and this dropped to 603 feet per second at shot number 19. 
from shot number 20 to shot number 30, it dropped through the 500s with 503 feet per second at shot number 30. Shot number 31 to 34 was in the 400s with shot number 44 shooting at 466 feet per second and thereafter the gun wouldn't cycle anymore. If we look at this on a graph, you can see that this is definitely not a, um, a regulated gun and the velocity dropped in a, almost a straight line from the 680 until the 460 feet per second. We tested the muzzle velocity of the sortie by shooting these pellets through the crony. The JSB exact jumbo of 15.89 grain, the HN sniper magnum of 17.9 grain, and the JSB exact jumbo heavy of 18.13 grain. Now, Hudson claims a muzzle velocity of 700 feet per second at muzzle energy of 16 foot pound. What we did was to shoot strings of five through the crony because as the muzzle velocity drops with the pressure it doesn't really give a true indication of what the muzzle velocity is with full pressure so we decided on strings of five. Looking at what we found the following was revealed. With the lighter pellets of 15.89 grain, we achieved a maximum muzzle velocity of 682 feet per second and an average with that pellet of 876. With the sniper magnums, we achieved a maximum muzzle velocity of 649 with an average of 643 and with the JSB exact heavies, the muzzle velocity was 643 with an average of 639. What is interesting is that regardless of the weight of the pellets, the muzzle energy is spot on as Hudson has claimed with muzzle energies of 16.12, 16.43 and 16.4 for the um, three pellets respectively. So what we can say is that although we did not achieve quite the 700 feet per second that Hudson claims, if we used pellets that are slightly lighter, perhaps around 14 grain, I'm pretty sure that 700 feet per second would be quite achievable. We tested the accuracy over 10 and 25 meters using JSB exact jumbo heavies of 18.13 grain. As usual, I asked one of my children to do the shooting. In this case, the winner was Stefan. So, let's see what happened. So these are the results. At 10 meters, this JSB exact jumbo heavies of 18.13 grain made a very large hole, or perhaps not so large, but a center to center grouping of 8 millimeters, which is truly impressive. And then at 25 meters, 
Perhaps it was even more impressive because the same pellets made a hole of 17 millimeter center to center, which I really believe is much better than I could have ever expected for this pistol, or carbine, or whatever you'd like to call it. We test the sound of the Hudson sortie by comparing it to two other air guns. First, the Crossman Fury NP, a nitrous piston brake barrel air rifle, which is of medium loudness. And now the AR6K, a medium powered PCP with an unshrouded barrel, which is known to be fairly loud. And finally then, the Hudson Sortie with its shrouded barrel. My apologies for the background noise, but we have a power outage at the moment, so I had to start the generator. Anyway, moving on, let's now have a look at the graph to compare the sounds of these rifles visually. So now let's see what we have found. Not surprising, both the Evenix AR6K and the Hudson Sortie were much louder than the brake barrel Crossman Fury. However, what was surprising to me was that the Hudson Sortie was just as loud as the Evenix, despite the fact that the Sortie is much less powerful and it has a shrouded barrel, while the Evenix does not have a shrouded barrel. I don't know why this has happened, but it may be because of the short barrel. However, what we can say is that the Hudson Sortie is definitely not a backyard friendly pistol. To demonstrate the advantage of the sortie above other air guns which are bigger and not semi-automatic, we placed five pelotons at 10 meters and see how quickly Stefan could knock them over. Three, two, one, skit. In a previous video review of the JK Hahn, I did a similar test with the bullpup, but we shot only at three tins. Let's see what happened there.
So this demonstration clearly shows the advantages of a semi-automatic pistol compared to other rifles. To knock down 5 tins in 5.6 seconds is very fast. And it's even more impressive if you look at the bullpup time of about 9 seconds to knock down only 3 tins. So I think this really demonstrates why this sortie is a very handy little gun. So, what is my final verdict about this Hudson Sortie pistol? Well, firstly, it's very big, it's very heavy, and actually quite difficult to use as a pistol. However, it does come with this detachable folding stock, and that makes it much easier to use as a compact little carbine, and that is how I would recommend you use this gun. Not as a pistol, I doubt you'd really be able to shoot it accurately. Of course, this uh, compact size and the fact that it's semi-automatic enables you to shoot very quickly and we were able to shoot down five pellet tins at the range of 10 meter in about 5.6 seconds and that is quite impressive. The gun is quite powerful for such a compact rifle and it easily reaches the 16 foot pound energy claimed by Hudson. However, this comes at a price in terms of shots per fill because it has a fairly small reservoir. It you only reach about 30 good shots per fill. The trigger is also fairly heavy and the gun is very noisy and definitely not backyard friendly. However, the gun is extremely accurate, much more so than I would have expected. Pricing is not too bad. In South Africa, you pay between eight and 9,000 rand for it, and in the US, it's about 470 to 550 dollars. So, would I buy this gun again? Definitely. I'm not exactly sure what the intended use is, but it's still a lot of fun, it's accurate, it's powerful enough to do small game hunting, and perhaps a bit more. So, thank you for watching. And see you next time.